Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lauren. I do ramp content on my channel whenever I can. So it's been a while since my last iceberg video, as my last iceberg video was the Ever After High iceberg back in July. And since then, I haven't really had any time to make any videos, especially an iceberg video, because of college and how much work I have. But because it is Thanksgiving break, first of all, happy Thanksgiving. I wanted to find a short iceberg chart and try to make a video and upload for you all. So I found a victorious iceberg online, which I really wanted to cover for you all as I had never seen a victorious iceberg. It's always been iCarly. It's always been Nickelodeon. Never just victorious. So the original iceberg is in Spanish, which I did have to translate it using the little amount of Spanish I know and Google Translate. So some of the entries did have a few mistranslations, which I did fix. I also add a few entries into the iceberg as well. Credit to the YouTuber Rick Nett who made this iceberg and posted it on X. He has his own video on the iceberg in Spanish if you speak Spanish and want to check it out. Anyways, without further ado, sit back, relax, grab a snack, and let's get into the victorious iceberg. Adult jokes. The adult jokes don't really need an in-depth talk about them. The jokes span throughout the show from either actions the characters do to random comments made. Throat is my instrument. I'm a throat player. Doesn't count. It sounds kind of gross. How does a person go from an A to a D? Happened to me in eighth grade. Butternut. In the episode Stage Fighting, which is the third episode of season one, the term butternut is used as somewhat of a safe word to call time out. Cool thing to note is that after this episode was released, the Victoria's staff and crew would yell butternut whenever they got freaked out or frustrated. Ships. Not a very uncommon thing, as every show has characters that the fans tend to ship. Some of these ships consisted of Tori and Andre, Beck and Tori, Andre and Jade, Robbie and Kat, and the list goes on. Victoria Justice speaks Spanish. Now Victoria Justice is half European and half Puerto Rican, with her Puerto Rican side coming from her mom. However, she is not fluent in the Spanish language. Drake and Josh in Victorious. This is in reference to a small scene where Kat is talking and an episode of Drake and Josh appears in Victorious, showing Drake and Josh by a sushi conveyor belt. Beck's parents. Beck's parents are pretty mysterious in the show. We only get a small scene of Beck's dad in the episode Beck Dumps Jade. Other than that, we don't get any other insight into Beck's home life. All we know is that his parents let him live in an RV. Pear. This is probably in reference to the pear products throughout the series. These products also existed in iCarly and in the spin-off Sam and Cat. Victoria Sims. This is in reference to the Victorious games and how the characters each had a sim-like character that looked just like them in the games. No one likes you. This entry refers to the line that Jade constantly says to Trina throughout the entirety of the show, No one likes you. No one likes you! Andre matured young. Weird translation and I was really confused at first until I realized it had to do with Andre's grandma. Andre matured young could be in reference to the fact that he lives with his grandma. As speculated by a lot of fans and maybe even confirmed, Andre's grandma has dementia or something similar to it. Because of how dementia can affect a person and how a caretaker or loved one has to constantly remind them about certain things, it can be assumed that Andre had matured at a young age in order to take care of his grandma. I Party with Victorious I Party with Victorious was the hour-long crossover special between iCarly and Victorious as the two coincide within the same universe and many fans have been anticipating a crossover between the two. The premise of the special is Carly and Tori are unknowingly dating the same guy. The iCarly gang goes to Hollywood to find Carly's boyfriend at a party hosted by Andre at Kenan Thompson's house. Fake for season. Theories have emerged about season four of Victorious, with some speculating that season four is just the full season three split in half as Victorious was canceled mid-season 3. This can also be in reference to the remarks made by Matt Bennett, the actor who played Robbie in the series. 
Matt, who tends to stream a lot, has made remarks about episodes that were made but never aired, leading many to speculate that this is the true, quote-unquote, season 4 of Victorious. However, it is unknown if this is even true as it has been reported that Matt either changes the amount of episodes that are missing or is overall making them up. Sinjin Seminar The actor who played Sinjin, Mikey Reed, continuously hosts online acting seminars via Zoom. Debate on iCarly with Victorious On the iCarly.com website, there was a video where a debate was crashed by the characters of Victorious. Okay, so like the whole cast of Victorious is crashing this web segment? Oh no, just us three. Make that four. Hollywood Arts doesn't exist. This is in reference to the fact that Hollywood Arts, an in-universe high school, doesn't seem to have actual school type things, such as classes like math, history, etc as well as the fact that in real life, the school entrance that was used in the show is called Burbank High School, and it was digitally altered to have Hollywood Arts written on it. Dan Schneider I don't think this needs any introduction. Dan Schneider is the producer of Victorious, Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, and iCarly, and many other shows. And he's a very controversial figure, as many allegations have come out about him. Whether that be the foot fetish, to sexual and inappropriate behavior towards his actors, the allegations span various actors slash actresses, but more choose not to speak out due to either contracts having been signed or they are afraid of being blacklisted. I made a whole video on Dan Schneider as I had covered the Dan Schneider iceberg back in 2021. So if you want a full in-depth video about him, go check that video out, it will be linked in the description. Victorious Reboot with the reboot of iCarly and the Zoe 101 movie reboot, Zoe 102, many question on whether or not Victorious will begin a reboot as well, especially since the show ended prematurely. Victoria Justice, Elizabeth Gillies, and Ariana Grande have all spoken out about possibly wanting to partake in it if it happens. But so far, they have been the only stars from the cast that have given their opinion on it. Now, there is a possibility that one, it may not happen due to the set they used being demolished Two, actors may not greenlight the idea of doing a reboot with the possibility of it having to do with their memories working with Dan Schneider. Or three, they've already grown out and worked on bigger and better things. Victorious Dolls Spin Master Dolls made a doll line of the Victorious characters. Two waves were released, one in 2011 and the other in 2012. Helen in Victorious Helen was one of the characters in Drake and Josh, as she is the manager of the premier theater where Josh works at. Helen then comes into Victorious as she is the new principal of Hollywood Arts. The Slap.com The Slap.com was an in-universe website that Victorious had similar to that of the iCarly.com website. You could read status updates by the characters and watch videos that you wouldn't see on the show, as well as play games. If you were to go to the website now, it will just take you to the Nickelodeon homepage. Many of the videos that were on the slap.com were uploaded onto YouTube. However, it is unknown if the games on the website are still playable. I would assume probably not since the website doesn't work like it used to, but that would mean the games might be partially lost media. Victorious without Tori. This most likely has to do with the idea of Tori either not being in Victorious or not being the sole main character of the show. Time and time again, the conversation gets brought up how the other characters like Andre and Jade were more talented than Tori, hence why Tori shouldn't have been given all the roles and performances that she got. According to a post made by gainno14679 in the r slash Victoria's subreddit, they say this in their post. Victoria Justice is a talented person, but the way her character was written to be this prodigy that can outdo all the other students backfired. Yes, she's talented, but compared to Liz and Ariana's vocals, they outdo her every time. This shows so much during the singing competition episode. Most of the cast outdid her, but somehow Tori won. It didn't help that Tori was being a terrible friend to Kat, Jade, and Beck. Why the writers thought we'd like Tori after clearly trying to ruin Jade and Beck's relationship for 90% of the series is beyond me. I would have liked the show so much if each episode a different character was the quote unquote lead. Tori's laundry list of character flaws ruins what could have been a great show. I think we all sing. 
The infamous quote that Victoria Justice made in an interview years ago that still gets brought up to this day. She's a beautiful voice, but it's awesome. She sings absolutely everything. She never stops. That's so true, Liz. You sing a lot too. Like, I, especially during the rehearsal. We all sing. Yeah, all I get it. Jade's parents. Just like Beck's parents, we are given little to no knowledge of her parents. The main parent we get a little insight into is Jade's father, Mr. West. Although he is not in a relationship with her mother, he does have a wife. He appeared in Walkstar as a person in the audience of Jade's play production, Well Wishes. So what we do understand is that Jade's parents most likely divorced and her dad is remarried to another woman. MSSD an acronym in Spanish titled Multiverso Serifilio de Sucio Dan is a multiverse that occurs among all of Dan Schneider's shows and how they are all connected with each other. For example, iCarly, Victorious, Sam and Cat, and Drake and Josh all reside in the same universe. So, Sam and Cat is the spin off of iCarly and Victorious, Sam and Cat are in the same universe as each other. However, in iCarly and Victorious, Drake and Josh is mentioned as a TV show that resides in the universe. Ariana marries Gibby's head. In a segment of what's Gibby thinking about on the iCarly.com website was Ariana marrying Gibby's head. Will the couple please step forward? Ariana. Hi. Do you take Gibby's head to be your lawfully wedded husband? I so do. Victorious cancellation. Victorious ended on February 2nd, 2013, and has had speculation for years as to why it ended so abruptly, with the main speculation being on-set rivalries or feuds between actors, with the main two being Victoria Justice and Ariana Grande. Ariana vs. Victoria As most fans of Victorious know, Ariana Grande and Victoria Justice had speculated conflict with each other. The two had a Twitter clash in which Ariana had responded to a comment that a fan had said regarding why Victorious ended so abruptly. According to Seventeen.com, a month after Victorious ended, Ariana allegedly hopped onto her Ask FM account to get the record straight as to why the show came to an end. Sweetheart, the only reason Victorious ended is because one girl didn't want to do it, she wrote. She chose to do a solo tour instead of a cast tour. If we had done a cast tour, Nickelodeon would have ordered another season of Victorious while Sam and Cat filmed simultaneously, but she chose otherwise. I'm sick of this BS. Some assumed that Ariana was referencing Victoria, who went on tour in the summer of 2013. After the Ask FM post, Victoria didn't directly address what was said, but she did make a comment on Twitter that raised some eyebrows. Some people would throw someone that they consider a friend under the bus just to make themselves look good. Hashtag stop being a phony. Hashtag if only they knew. It's weird to me that this incident happened and it gets overlooked regarding the two. The two of them continuously go on record and say nothing happened between them. However, the damage seems to have already been done. Because of the alleged feud between Ariana and Victoria, it's somewhat speculated that Victoria got blacklisted as she was seen as a quote-unquote mean girl. However, after the drama of this past summer regarding Ariana Grande home-wrecking Ethan Slater's marriage to ex-wife Lily J, many start to speculate whether or not Ariana was the quote-unquote mean girl on set for not just Victorious, but Sam and Cat as well. They changed Rex. In the pilot for Victorious, Rex, Robbie's puppet, was originally shown differently with a bigger head than what his character ended up having. Psychowitz is a bad teacher. I don't think this needs any explanation. Sykowitz has been shown leaving his students to pay for a $1,300 meal, chaperoning them to a war-torn country, and hosting a sleepover for his students at his house, and the list goes on. Trina's talent. The biggest question among fans was what Trina's talent was and how she got into Hollywood arts, especially as the show portrays her as talentless. In episode 9 of season 3 titled How Trina Got In, we find out from Sykowitz that Trina got in due to him being under the influence of Ron Coconut Milk and him watching her audition by himself. He single-handedly signed her into the school and hence that's how she got in. But yet, we don't know what Trina's talent is. In the episode Helen is Back, the students are told they have to reapply for Hollywood Arts and even though Trina gets rejected, she saves Helen from a quote-unquote mugger by attacking the mugger and quote-unquote saving Helen. So we can kind of speculate that that was Trina's talent. 
Dan Schneier photo in Tori's locker. According to the Victorious Wiki fandom, in a drive-by acting exercise video, a poster can be seen titled, Who's Hot? with Dan Schneier's picture above it in Tori's locker. This in itself is kind of weird given what we know about Dan and his history regarding his actors and actresses. Beck is a fuckboy slash emotional manipulator. Beck is seen on the show as one of the most attractive guys at Hollywood Arts, but from the beginning of the show, we have seen Beck be a little too friendly with girls who are not Jade. For example, in the pilot episode, he kisses Tori even though he's dating Jade. And while we're on the topic of Beck, Beck and Jade's toxic relationship. In my opinion, if you grew up watching the show, this was probably everyone's introduction to a toxic relationship. I compared them a little too much to Riven and Musa from Wings Club because the shows aired simultaneously on Nickelodeon, and I don't know, for some reason I made the connection like that. Beck and Jade's relationship has varied from person to person on who was the toxic one. Most people said Jade was the toxic one growing up, but that mindset does change a lot. If you've seen on TikTok, a lot of people side with Jade than they do with Beck. Personally, I think the actions Beck would do would trigger Jade, such as allowing girls to hit on him. And I think that Jade just needed reassurance from him. Victorious is a violent show. This is actually a pretty solid statement. The show featured episodes such as Rex dying, Cat in the mental ward, and that was the same episode by the way. That special where they went to a country facing a war. I think the list just goes on. They ended up in jail. 10th anniversary reunion for Victorious. In 2020, due to COVID, the cast of Victorious had a virtual reunion to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of Victorious. Because of the current situation, so we got together virtually. Thank you, Zoom. Here we are. We're all together. We got Leon. We got Matt. We got Avin. We got Ari. We got Eric. We got Vic. We got Daniela. We got Liz. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Woo! Studio was demolished. In 2017, Nickelodeon's Nikon Sunset Building, which was the filming grounds for Victorious, iCarly, and Drake and Josh, had been demolished. Victoria Justice took to Instagram and showed the wreckage of the studio. So you guys, here's something really weird and sad and crazy. This is where we used to film Victorious, right here at Nikon And it is now being demolished and tor torn down and it's crazy. I walked these streets with my cast and with everyone so many times. You have no idea. Um, it's just kind of crazy. Like, I don't know if you can kind of see, but right in there is where we used to have all the lunch scenes. So much went down here, you guys. It's pretty nuts. I mean, I just remember um, filming like lunch scenes through these gates and having homeless people that were walking the streets of Hollywood, which is very sad, but they would yell during takes and then we would have to stop and start again. Anywho, just want to say rest in peace, Nick on Sunset. Thanks for all the good times and the memories, and uh, I'll never forget you. And I hope you turn into something beautiful. Okay, that's it. The Victorious Ending According to Victoria According to an article by J14, in a lengthy Tumblr post from 2013, Victoria predicted what the future would hold for each character. The cast and I really do wish we had a proper finale, but it wasn't to be. So because we don't have one, I'm gonna tell you what I think happens to every cast member, she wrote. Tori. Tori gets signed to a record deal and becomes a pop star. She then goes out on a headlining tour. Andre. He also gets signed to a record deal and not only is super successful as a recording artist, but also as a writer slash producer. His albums go multi-platinum. Trina. Trina is looking to marry a prince because that's what she feels she deserves. So she auditions and gets accepted to the new season of The Bachelor, where England's Prince Harry is a new bachelor, poor Harry. Beck, he keeps auditioning and gets cast in his own series of a high school student who's also a sociopath. His new show films in another city and he and Jade break up. Kat, she realized she has strong feelings for Robbie and that it was him all along. Kat also starts her own babysitting service with a girl named Sam, Robbie. He finally says goodbye to Rex after he finds love with Kat. Sometimes he tries to move Kat's mouth with his hand. She understands and goes along with it. Jade goes on to have a very successful career as Hollywood's new horror queen. Psychowitz starts a very successful coconut water company. Sinjin becomes a billionaire because of a new social media online company he started. He gives Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook owner, a run for his money. 
Victoria concluded, there you have it, the gang always stays in touch every year after year at Hollywood Arts reunions. Ariana Kisses Elizabeth Gillies A video was posted showing Ariana and Elizabeth kissing. The two apparently would do this frequently as a quick makeup touch-up behind the scenes, so whoever had the most glossier lips, the other would kiss them. Ariana Behind the Scenes Ariana Behind the Scenes of Victorious is mainly shown from clips behind the scenes of all the actors or from Dan Schneider, who would occasionally film his actors. One video in particular was one of Ariana Grande and Elizabeth Gillies, in which the two seemed very uncomfortable by Dan filming them. Everyone can see them. Hey. <laughs> I've ever heard. Hey. Hi, what's going on here? Nothing. You didn't cut out that part. Why are you sitting on the floor of the set? Because we all. <laughs> Did you just bark? No. No, oh, I did. This can also be in reference to how Ariana acted behind the scenes of Sam and Cat, as according to actress Jeanette McCurdy, who played Sam in the show. In Jeanette's book, I'm Glad My Mom Died, she brings up instances behind the scenes of Sam and Cat where Ariana would seemingly brag about award shows she was singing at and celebrities she was hanging out with, which pissed Jeanette off as Jeanette was forced to hold down the fort while Ariana could miss filming. She would also compare their home lives as Ariana grew up wealthy and Jeanette grew up poor slash low middle class. Because of incidents like this, it was rumored that Sam and Kat ended due to a multitude of reasons, with those being pay disputes, negative rumors swirling around the cast, and a tough relationship between the two co-stars. Jeanette had also made a video seemingly mocking how Ariana acted behind the scenes in a series titled What's Next for Sarah, with a character named Gloriana who dresses and acts similarly to that of Ariana. Oh my God, I'm joining you. God, it has been such a long day. I've been to the facialist and the manicures and the nutritionist. It's like, what even? Like, what is life like? I can't. Can't what? It's just like too much. Kill myself. Suicide moments. Okay. So, how have you been? What have you been up to now that your show's been canceled? That's a super bummer, right? Um, yeah, it sucks. I've just been- Anyway, I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off. Except not like a chicken, because I'm vegan. I'll be. Oh, you're vegan? Oh my god. Oh my god, I didn't tell you. It's like the biggest change in my life. It's like the best thing that's ever happened to me. I am so happy. Like, I'm doing so well. I have never been better. Wow, Gloriana, your life sounds awesome. Mm, it is, it's amazing. You know, I'm just so glad I can be friendly to these little animals, those poor little things. Well, you're carrying a leather bag, so that's not really friendly, but... Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. An animal that is killed for an accessory is like far different than an animal that is killed for cellulite. So smart, you're just a little genius. Oh, thanks, only when I put my mind to it. <laughs> Oh my god, what was I saying? Uh, who knows? <gasps> oh, my music, right, that was it. Okay, so I have this idea for a music video, so just like, let me know what you think. Ariana defends Victoria. During the height of the alleged feud between Ariana and Victoria, Ariana had begun to defend Victoria, especially as the internet had painted Victoria as a quote-unquote mean girl. According to Seventeen.com, rumors of the feud escalated when Ariana sat down with Seventeen for her June 2013 cover story interview and discuss some drama with a former unnamed co-star. I worked with someone who told me they never liked me, she said, but for some reason, I just felt like I needed her approval. So I started changing myself to please her. It made me stop being social and friendly. I was so unhappy. Two years later, Victoria responded to the quote on the Meredith Vieira show. I would love to set the record straight because I feel like these rumors have been going on for way too long, she said. So basically, there was an article in Seventeen magazine where she had said that she was bullied on set and the magazine basically alluded to it being me. So once the article came out, actually before it came out, she texted me privately and was like, oh my gosh, I am so sorry. You know how the media twists words. I was not talking about you, obviously. I was talking about someone on Broadway that I had worked with. Later, Ariana made a statement to Seventeen about the quote. My years filming Victoria's were some of the happiest of my life and that cast is family to me, she said. The stories I shared with Seventeen were actually a reflective of a different work experience. Please don't send hate to anyone. It is undeserved and I would never want that. 
Love you guys very much and thank you for being here and supporting me. Also, thank you to Seventeen for allowing me this opportunity. Cat has ADHD. According to the Redditor Maddie-61 who posted this in the r slash Victoria subreddit, they elaborate on the theory that Cat is neurodivergent. Okay, so I'm watching Sam and Cat. I haven't seen it in years and I'm on the second episode now. As an autistic person, I have to say this. Cat Valentine is neurodivergent. Or at least I had canned her to be. Though she is used mostly for comedy, like neurodivergent characters often are because they're quote unquote quirky, she seems to be coded as neurodivergent. For example, in the episode I was just watching, Kat loses her mind because her favorite show is cancelled. She is hyperventilating, sobbing, and panicking. This is because the show is her special interest. If you don't know about autistic people and special interests, look it up. She's also been through a lot of trauma, as she mentions a few times throughout both Victorious and Sam and Kat. A lot of her quote-unquote quirks are behaviors lots of ADHD slash autistic slash otherwise neurodivergent people display, stimming when feeling strong emotions, energetic, jerky mannerisms at times, childlike qualities, etc. I'm autistic, so in my mind, I see her as autistic as well, but she could be something else. Victoria's promoted toxic friendships. According to the Redditor Redakai20, who posted this in the r slash Victoria subreddit, it reads the following. Jade West constantly treats her friends like shit. People take advantage of Kat's sweet nature. Tori sabotaged her relationship, and Robbie betrayed the gang for popularity. Plus, Robbie generally gets bullied by his friends. All in all, there doesn't seem to be any genuine relationships. There is a fine line between resolvable conflict slash drama to make the show interesting and promoting toxic friendships slash behavior. They should have at least had two characters have genuine friendships. They're still allowed to have their conflicts like every friend, but once the conflict is resolved, it's not any good if they keep acting toxic repeatedly or outside of conflicts. User Ambitious Prince added to the conversation and said, You make a good point. I think about Robbie and how he just gave up his friendships for popularity a lot, especially since he had to be blackmailed just to stop what he was doing. Although Tori and Andre seem to have a pretty solid friendship at least. The OP replied to the comment by saying, Not only that, but Robbie was bullied by a lot of his friends, even though it was played for comedy. While I'm not defending Robbie, I think the Robberazzi was just him reacting to the bullying and the punching back status the others gave him. Yet, he's painted as the villain. They should have at least tried to talk to him. He got punished before he had a chance to realize what he'd done wrong. Tori is the worst character. A lot of people agree with this notion, especially when Victorious got put onto Netflix. TikTok had a field day with users making videos as to why they never liked Tori. According to the user, just want to spend my time, who posted this in the r slash unpopular opinion subreddit, it reads the following. First of all, she's annoying. Apart from the fact that she's supposed to be the best among her friends, which she isn't, she is very self-absorbed and passive-aggressive. She is always mean to her friends and puts them down. However, she is supposed to be the kind one. She kissed both of Kat's and Jade's boyfriends, hasn't realized why Jade hates her, and got mad at Kat because she was upset at her for kissing her boyfriend. Back to her skills. I don't understand why she is supposed to be the best student and person in the show. She is definitely not. Everyone sings better than her, all the girls are prettier than her, even Trina is more entertaining. All in all, Tori is boring. She doesn't have a distinctive personality like the others. Kat is the gullible one, Jade is the mean one, Beck is the talented hottie, Robbie is the weirdo, Andre is an amazing songwriter, Trina is supposed to be annoying, Tori is Tori. She doesn't have a personality. If she was a side character, no one would pay any attention to her. Ariana is not humble. It's varied from person to person on how they feel about Ariana Grande, as well as what they think about how she treats her fans. For example, some have met her in person and recount her as being very sweet. Others have had an interaction with her and recount Ariana being rude. For example, several Disney employees recount Ariana being rude. For example, here's a video from the TikToker at Teresa underscore Jack. I know we're all livid with Ariana Grande because of this Ethan Slater nonsense, but just know that you and I or anyone else will never dislike her as much as the Disney Guest Relations cast members. Nick, I'm so sorry. I found your photo on Google. This is not the whistleblower. I do not know this man. But if you happen to know any 
plaids, they will tell you that Ariana Grande is the rudest person that has ever graced the parks. So if you're in Disney World or Disneyland and you see a plaid hanging out outside of the park, that means that a VIP is on a ride. These guys will do guided tours for $350 an hour, last time I checked, uh, for VIPs and help them get on and off the rides. It's usually just wealthy families, but on occasion it is celebrities. And unfortunately, sometimes that's Ariana Grande. And these guys, I can't tell you how many of them I've met that will not guide her around the parks anymore. But those celebrities, like they cut the line, right? But like other than that, they're treated like just anyone else. Like I had a friend who was working on Pirates of the Caribbean and Tina Fey came through with a plaid and they just like, had her cut the line and then put her in on a boat with everybody else and she did pirates of the caribbean and then met her plaid at the very end of the ride that's normal that is unless you're ariana grande no 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 no. ariana grande doesn't just cut lines okay she shuts them down ariana grande comes out here and says no the whole rock and roller coaster shut the whole thing down okay it will be shut down for hours because you have to shut down the line if people are in the line kick them out that's like a three hour process. I will only be the one who enters the building. No one else can be in the building at the same time as me. That is not normal celebrity behavior and trust and believe I am upset with Ethan Slater. Don't let me see you again in New York. Don't let me see you. But all I'm saying is if you want the real tea, ask the cast members. Here's another video from TikToker at Tom Bredesen who recounts her own story meeting Ariana while working at Disney World in Orlando. I have a story about this. So I was working Halloween Horror Nights at the former one year, and um, there the house was like super busy, you know, it's Horror Nights, and then all of a sudden it was like dead, like nobody was in the house, and it was really weird because we're like, what the heck, this is a sold out night, like the line's an hour long, why are there no guests like in that line for the house? And then all of a sudden, a group of bodyguards, like literally a group of bodyguards Ariana Grande and her dog came through and like, of course, I didn't know at the time it was Ariana Grande, but then like after looking at social media and looking at Frankie Grande, cause you know, he's in Orlando a lot. I was like, oh, that was Ariana Grande. That's kind of cool. You know, I scared Ariana Grande at Halloween Horror Nights. Well, I found out that night that Ariana was being super rude to the team members. They were putting her in a golf cart and escorting her around the park, like backstage. So, you know, she wouldn't be seen. She was demanding free food. She was pissed off because they would have to clear the house, then let her walk through. And she was being impatient because there had to be time to clear the guests out of the park so she could have her own experience going through the houses. And she had her dog, which is not allowed, unless it's a service animal, which it's not. She was just completely disrespectful and I have been wanting to tell that story forever. Giving my own opinion, after the drama with Ethan Slater, I personally believe that Ariana Grande has shown her true colors and has been for years. I don't think she's as nice as everyone paints her out to be, especially when it comes to her home wrecking a relationship where a child was involved, even now that gets swept under the rug. Play Pirates In a small scene, a comment is made by Kat, how about we play Pirates? And Robbie says, I'll play Pirates with you. And then Kat responds, no, I don't like how you play Pirates, while giving him somewhat of a nasty look. I don't see why we can't just pretend to be Pirates. I'll play Pirates with you. No. I don't like how you play pirates. There are several more scenes referencing this quote unquote pirate game. I'm so upset. Did you try to play pirates with her? No. Bobby, I'm bored. I don't want to play anymore. All right, well, do you want to play something else? Like what? Arr! No! <laughs> hey, look at, look at what I got. No! The game is implied to be an inappropriate game that makes Kat uncomfortable, and other friends, especially Jade, know about it. But details about the game are all theories. Rex is alive. In the r slash Victoria subreddit, a debate went on regarding if Rex was alive. Many said that Rex is just Robbie's scapegoat, as he's too afraid of confrontation or to defend himself, meaning he's just a doll. Or Rex is alive and he moves around without the need of Robbie. I think one instance that can be brought up is the episode Who Did It to Trina, where we see that Rex was the one who cut Trina's cord. 
However, if we look at it from the perspective of Robbie controlling Rex, this would mean Robbie would have done it and used Rex as a scapegoat once again. Tori's mom is having an affair. An adult joke that has been implied throughout the series is that Tori's mom is having an affair with the dad's co-worker, Gary. In the episode Crazy Pawnee, this is when the affair is first and fully pushed out. From small comments that Tori's mom makes, to references of text messages that are exchanged between her and Gary, to the end of the episode where we meet Gary and he talks about Tori's mom. <laughs> what? Who texted you? Oh, it's just Gary, your father's friend on the police force. What do you say? Oh, nothing. I'll just delete this. Well, can you call his partner? Okay, I'll text Gary. Yeah, text Gary. I like that guy. I know, he's handsome, right? <sighs> Thanks, Gary. Sure. I'll text your mom. Let her know you're okay. Good. She's a special lady. What I find crazy was this was a small implied incident in a children's show. So it also reminds me of The Incredibles and how an affair was relevant to the plot. Do you ever wonder, like, who else is fucking your man? Uh uh. Ariana wishes death to fans. According to an article by Koi Moy, an insider who worked with Ariana Grande leaked an incident that happened back in 2014. She did autographs and pics and was all smiles until she got into the elevator, the insider claimed. And as soon as the doors shut, she said, I hope they all fucking die, they added. Ariana Grande's alleged words fired back and several people said she was growing too big for her boots. However, later, the singer tweeted about the same and brushed this off as a rumor. Man, some of these rumors that have been coming out about me lately actually have me laughing out loud. Really, can't take them seriously, Ariana's tweet read. Jade cuts herself. A far-fetched theory that some fans have is that Jade cuts herself. The basis for this being that even though Jade tries to channel her hate into her art, for example her films, she still has hate left over. With some speculating, it may have something to do with her parents' divorce. And because she enjoys scissors, and has said she enjoys pain, many speculate that Jade cuts herself with any sharp object she can get her hands on. The Victorious cast got drunk frequently. In Jeanette McCurdy's book, I'm Glad My Mom Died, it was revealed that the Victorious cast would get drunk frequently. In the book, a man only referred to as the creator, who has been speculated to be Dan Schneider, was peer pressuring Jeanette to drink. I've never had alcohol before, and I'm only 18. Couldn't I get in trouble, McCurdy said? In response, McCurdy said she was told, No one's looking, janitor. You're fine. According to the actor, the creator continued, The Victorious kids get drunk together all the time. The iCarly kids are so wholesome. We need to give you guys a little edge. Here's a video from the Slap.com where many fans speculate Victoria and Ariana were drunk when they filmed this. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We need to be serious. Yeah. Serious. Let's be serious. <laughs> okay. Trina bullying. According to a post made on the r slash Victoria subreddit by the user Mausers, the post reads as the following. Maturing is realizing the way Trina was treated was so damn sad. I need some of you all to understand how depressing the birth week episode actually is. People think Trina is selfish for wanting more than one day to be about her. But she's not like Tori. She doesn't get tons of publicity or spotlight almost every single episode. So I can completely understand why she would want a birth week to savor something being remotely about her for more than just one day. It's actually really sad. People also thought she was a horrible character for acting selfishly when it came to Tori's quote-unquote present. Tori's present was a song she did not write and called tons of people over to watch her perform, not saying Trina shouldn't have been grateful, but on the other hand, when you really think about it, it wasn't really much of a present at all. There are a lot of things Trina has done that has given Tori the attention she gets. Has she ever been thanked for those things? No, never. And come on man, she's not wanted at school or home, and her parents have made it perfectly clear that they play favorites. What's even crazier is how in a lot of episodes, Tori and her gang are having the time of their lives at the karaoke bars or Chinese restaurants, while you have Trina, who is seriously working her ass off even for the smallest of roles. 
She would still be excited even if she was given the role of a background character. It didn't matter. She would still put her all into it, no matter how ridiculous the part she was playing was. Like the little cheese and mice commercial in Mexico. She didn't care how embarrassing it was, she just wanted to call herself a professional actress. And it's idiotic to know how Tori has been in tons of plays and didn't even know what the hell an understudy was. I bet you Trina did. As a matter of fact, she's been Tori's understudy almost her whole entire life. But God, she wrote and performed a one-woman play. Wrote and performed. No one could ever tell me that Trina isn't a hard worker and deserves just as much as Tori was given. People also thought Trina was annoying for tagging along uninvited when Tori and her little friend group went around participating in different fun activities. Well, being alone will do that to you. Trina literally has no friends and her family doesn't want to spend time with her either. And can we talk about regardless of how popular her younger sister was, Trina never really showed any jealousy or spite. Even watching Tori be successful at everything Trina was trying to accomplish, she never went out of her way to ruin it for her. So pretty much, Trina has no friends, she's neglected and basically tormented by her parents, not defended by her own sister, who hangs out and associates with so many people who treat her horribly, and she constantly gets told she's horrible at everything she loves to do. Edit. There are things I forgot to mention, such as how Psychowitz portrayed Trina as shy and timid in her freshman year, a little geeky. Those things about a person are bully fueled. It is a possibility Trina gained all of her self-confidence as a way to ignore the flaws people were claiming she had. Just a theory. Edit 2, another theory. In the birth week episode, it could be so that Trina's rant about how if you don't buy it, it isn't a present, could be insisting that the way her parents barely spend time with her and instead throw money and expensive items at her, which they've done with Tori so many times as well, she could have genuinely been confused and also could have made her believe that things like that is a love language. Another instance brought up is in a Victoria's Theory post where someone posted the following. Trina is a bully victim. Her apparent selfishness slash self-obsession was probably a defense mechanism to mask her insecurities and unhappiness due to being bullied by her mom who clearly favors Tori and by Tori's friends. She was hated to the point where someone almost killed her in that one episode where Rex slash Robbie cut Trina's gimbal. That is some scary, sad shit. Robbie has psychological problems. Over the years, many have speculated Robbie to have some sort of psychological problem, such as schizophrenia or multiple personality disorder, also known as DID, dislocative identity disorder. However, others see it as more of a stunted stage that Robbie was in. According to the user Justine AE, who posted this in the r slash Victoria subreddit, it reads the following. A lot of people say that Robbie had a personality disorder or schizophrenia, and that's why he believed Rex was a real person. Don't get me wrong, I used to think it was some kind of mental disorder too, but after rewatching all the seasons, I have a different approach. I think Robbie was just a little stunted when it came to Rex. He never really grew out of the stage where he would talk to puppets and believe that they're real. The reason why I believe that is because it seems like in later seasons, Robbie just grows out of it. He seems to grow into himself, gaining more confidence, and didn't really need Rex anymore. We see Rex less and less with time, and it's not really a big deal. He even sells him. Yeah, he gets him back because he misses him and all, but that still doesn't stop him from selling Rex in the first place. I can't see season 1 Robbie doing that in a million years. Or maybe it's just me hoping for the best because I don't want Robbie to suffer from a condition like that. Cat suffered SA. What has been speculated by many, especially due to comments made by Cat in the series, many believe that Cat has some sort of childhood trauma caused by her brother. Fans either speculate that it was physical or sexual abuse that her brother caused her, with one redditor saying the following theory. Cat's brother is abusive to Cat because of his psychological problems, but Cat is convinced it's okay. I also feel like he might have sexually assaulted her at one point, which is why she reverted back to such a childlike state, as well as because her parents don't pay much attention to her, because they're so focused on her brother that she never properly developed and is just stuck at a lower mental maturity level because of her trauma. Jade died. In the season 4 episode Brain Squeezers, a car battery falls onto Jade's head. The average weight that the human skull can hold up to is 300 kilograms, considering if you're healthy. The average weight of a car battery is 500 kilograms, 
and because of the height it was dropped at, there's no way Jade could have survived it without a dent to her skull. While getting the video clip to this, I saw the comments and somebody went into exact detail of what could have happened, and I'm going to read it to you right now. The car battery that hit Jade's head was likely a Volocraft 65VL, given the dimensions and the logo, which weighs 35.45 pounds, 16.08 kilograms. Assuming the battery fell from about a meter, the battery hit Jade's head with about 71.2234 newtons of force. It is entirely possible to fracture the skull with around 73 newtons. Jade's skull is possibly fractured. There's probably some internal bleeding, perhaps a concussion, her neck might be broken, and not to mention all the sulfuric acid pouring out of the battery once it hits the floor and the top falls off, which still might not happen, but given the height the battery fell from, it's very likely. I've seen batteries drop from a lesser height, burst open, and leave residue on the floor for months. Jade is probably in a coma, if not fucking dead. She wouldn't kick her head backwards and fall on her back. She would fall face first into the podium, possibly breaking her nose as well. Here's the scene from that episode. Car battery! Ariana Grande objectification. As many look back to Ariana's start on Nickelodeon, there are a couple of videos that showcase Ariana in a childlike way, almost sexualizing the actress. Most content that portrayed Ariana like this was on the Slap.com. While on the topic of that, rare video of Kat. On the Slap.com, there were several videos of Kat that exist where she seemed to be overly objectified and sexualized. Oh man, my uvula got stuck between that hamster's toes. What is that swingy thing in the back of your throat right here? I'm soaking wet! Have you ever tried to get your whole big toe in your mouth? Check this out! Mm, I'm thirsty! It's not possible! The Victoria Justice Pack. Back in 2014, over 100 celebrities were hit with a large-scale hacking by an alleged iCloud leak, with some of those celebrities consisting of Jennifer Lawrence, Ariana Grande, Kim Kardashian, Selena Gomez, and Vanessa Hudgens. Victoria Justice was one of those celebrities who had her photos leaked. At first, she denied the photos being real, but went on to say the following. Shortly after I tweeted about certain pics of me being fake, I was faced with a serious violation of privacy," she wrote on Twitter. There have always been fake photos of me on the internet, but I will not be put in the position to defend myself as to what is real and what is fake. I am angry at this massive invasion of privacy, and like the other women who are in this situation alongside me, I am taking legal action to protect my rights. Tori is dead. A very far-fetched theory that seems pretty interesting is the theory that Tori dies close to the end of the show. This theory by the user CityBoo1999, who posted this in the r slash Victoria subreddit, reads the following. Quarantine got me bored, so I decided to rewatch Victorious and I was watching the season 3 episode Crazy Pawnee. The episode is about a girl named Pawnee, played by fan favorite Nickelodeon star Jeanette McCurdy, who is trying to sabotage Tori's life for supposedly taking her spot at Hollywood Arts. She is shown to be absolutely psycho. Near the end of the episode, Tori is finally able to apprehend Pawnee with the help of her dad's cop buddy, Gary. And the truth about Pawnee is finally unraveled. She's really a girl named Fawn Lebowitz who got kicked out of the school because of her crazy behavior. Psychowitz asks Gary to get someone to give Tori and Trina a police escort home. And the scene cuts to her riding in the back of a police car, seemingly relieved that it is all over. But like something straight out of a bad horror movie, we see that it is indeed Pawnee driving the cop car. Sorry. I don't even mind. I think that this episode was actually the last episode in the Victorious timeline, despite being earlier in the season's airing order, and that Pawnee ended up killing Tori, and probably Trina too because she's so annoying. There are three main reasons as to why I think this theory makes sense. 1. The show ended seemingly abruptly and there was never really a true quote-unquote final episode that wrapped things up, so it's fair to treat this as the last episode. 2. In the same episode, we see that Jade shaves off Kat's head completely, 
and in other episodes in the season, she clearly isn't bald. This supports the idea that this episode was chronologically last. There was probably enough time in between this and the beginning of the events in Sam and Cat for her hair to grow back. Lastly, in Sam and Cat, there is absolutely no mention or appearance of Tori Vega. We only see Jade and Robbie. Don't ask me where Beck is, he's probably in Canada or something. It's like she doesn't exist anymore. And the characters of Victorious were too traumatized to talk about her death or something. These to me seem like pieces of evidence that make this theory quite plausible. There might even be more that I haven't noticed. And yes, there are probably other arguments that would weaken this theory, but that's like most TV show theories out there if you ask me. Adding on to the traumatized part of this theory, which I don't know, I was just thinking about it right now. The characters probably don't mention Tori due to the fact that Tori was basically gaslit by her friends this entire episode. Like, I don't remember how bad the gaslighting was and that was crazy to me. But anyways, what do you all think about this theory? So to end off this video, I do want to say I'm actually pretty proud of myself for getting the majority of all this video done in one day. I started at like about 10.30 this morning and it is like 8.20 right now p.m. And I'm just proud of myself. And it was also mainly because my roommate's coming back tonight and I wanted to get this done before she came back. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed a little iceberg video I was able to put out for you all. I'm actually really happy I got this done because finals are coming up and I will not be able to make any content until after my finals are done and I'm home for the holidays. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Comment down below what else you guys want me to talk about on my channel. And I just have to say it again. I'm really proud of myself for getting this done and I really do hope you all enjoyed it. Anyway, so I'm going to end the video here. Stay safe and I'll see you all next time on my channel. Bye guys.